I wonder how few pages the average cozy mystery would have if the police were actually competent or would refuse to let civilians just work on their investigations. Probably about five. Yeah, until the corpse turns up pretty much. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kate and today I would like to talk about Made of Murder by Amanda Flower. India's childhood friend asks her to be a bridesmaid at her wedding, but then the bride gets murdered before the big day. And India's brother is the main suspect. With the bride's mother gunning for her brother, India gets involved to prove his innocence. I won't say too much about the story from here on out, so I don't give you any spoilers. But I really liked India. She is resourceful, she has doubts. So even when the main suspect is her brother and she wants to prove his innocence, it never gets to the point where she's just like, no, he couldn't have done it. There's enough happening in the story to actually make her doubt whether her brother might actually be responsible or not. And their bond doesn't blind her to the possibility that he might have accidentally killed somebody. I think it counts towards millennial cozy mystery instead, where the protagonist is not like, a woman in her 30s or 40s going back home or moving to another town after a breakup or something. India is just at her job as a librarian. She just wants to be left alone, particularly from like first semesters or something. But she's just established in her job. She lives close to her family and it's not a scenario where she just runs back from a breakup or something. She just lives there already and has different problems than the average protagonist in a cozy mystery, I think. They're usually well set up and don't have to worry about money for some mysterious reason at points, but India is very much worried about money, which I can actually connect more with than with people who are just like, oh yeah, I can just buy this shop over here or I don't have to worry about anything. It's like, oh cool, do you? How, how nice for you. <laughs> Part of the setup for India is that her family also lives close by, not just her brother, but also her sister, her kids and her parents. And this family is a lot to deal with. There's a lot of shouting and not listening to one another involved whenever she actually spends time with her family. And well, I found them exhausting and I only had to spend a couple of pages with them. So, wow, I feel a bit sorry for India on that end. India's best friend and colleague Bobby is quite fun as well. I like the way they interact with each other and that it's completely platonic. They're both heterosexual as far as I can tell so far. And Bobby is made out to be quite a Casanova, but there is zero romantic interest between them. At the very least in this one book, there is nothing to like also because the cop that leads the investigation seems to be built up as the romantic interest, possibly for India in further books in the series. But I like the platonic friendship you get to see. It did annoy me a bit that it gets to the point where Bobby passes some doubts that India has about somebody off as jealousy of some sort, even though that is definitely not what India feels. Yeah, kind of failed her a bit there as a best friend at one point, but generally their relationship is quite nice to read. So a bit more on the cop that leads the investigation. He seems to have a thing for India, which is a bit peculiar because he used to date her big sister, which is also the reason why she gets away with some things, like messing with this investigation and removing evidence. These kinds of things that would usually get you arrested, or at the very least turfed off the crime scene. But India gets away with it because there's a bit of a personal history between those two. And so far from India, it doesn't seem like she's massively interested in this guy, even though she notices that he's like good looking or whatever, but mostly her thing's like, oh yeah, that's the guy that used to date my sister, okay. As long as I can use it to get away with this and actually help my brother, okay. Mm. Yeah, I like that she's not instantly like moony-eyed for him or whatever. It's nice to read a protagonist that is not all about the romance, even though there are bigger things at stake. As is quite common with these kinds of books, once all the suspects are in place and all the chess pieces are on the board, it seems somewhat obvious who did it, 
but you know if you only have a suspect pool of four people max then I guess that just happens. Overall I enjoyed following India though. She is an interesting character. I like how she is different from most of the other cozy mystery protagonists I've read over like the last year or two. Yeah, I particularly liked how she actually had doubts about her brother at points. So overall I'd say it's this cat. And if you feel like reading a cozy mystery that is a bit different from maybe a lot of the cozy mysteries you've read before. So if you're in the mood for some cozy mystery, I can only recommend you pick up this book and meet India yourself. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to help this channel out and let me know in the comments what your favorite cozy mystery is. I'll be back next week with another video. Thanks for your time. Bye guys.